Hello friends. So today I'm going to do a book review before I forget everything that I read in the book because that happens unfortunately. Wish I could just lock things into my mind forever but that's just not a skill that I have. Um, <laughs> my mom asks why I spend any time rereading the same books and for the same reason that I rewatch movies, which she doesn't actually like to do so much. Oh well. But it's like watching a movie in your mind, so why not reread it? However, this time this is a new book that I've read, and it is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Number one, what is this book about? I would like to put out there that this will be a little bit spoilery if you wanted to go in with absolutely no context. I'm not going to tell you every single thing that happens in the book, obviously we would be here for a very long time because it's a lengthier book. But, but I will have some spoilers in it because when I read the book I had zero clue at all what this was going to be about. For example, I didn't know that Coriolanus was the same as President Snow. And I'm sure a lot of people go into this book knowing that, but I did not know that. For whatever reason, I thought that the Hunger Games were sort of like the Olympics and that they happened every four years or so instead of every year. So I thought, oh, there's no way that Coriolanus can be the same President Snow. I also didn't realize that President Snow was so old during the Hunger Games. He's like 80 or something. I thought he was in his 60s, but oh well, I don't know. <laughs> So the first thing that's really strange about this book is that you witness a slow progression into madness, it seems. Because at the beginning, Coriolanus seems like just somebody who's in an unfortunate situation, and he makes choices that I don't agree with. However, you can understand the way that he justifies his actions. but. By the end, he's making choices that are so bad that I don't understand how he can still justify them. But somehow he manages it. And it's just a crazy situation to be reading a book where the hero of the story is not the hero of the story. In a way, the hero is Lucy Gray, but we're not looking at it from her perspective. So that's just a really strange thing to me. But I really like that we do see that perspective and it helps you to understand that President Snow didn't get the way that he is just overnight. This was a long progression and there's points where his moral compass is put to the test where he thinks that something that he's doing is wrong and he knows that it's wrong, but in order to live with himself he just justifies it until he gets to a point where he can sleep at night. And I think this is an interesting lesson because nobody in the world starts off evil. There's a lot of reasons why people who seem evil and manipulative are the way that they are. And a lot of it goes back to their upbringing for whatever reason has molded them into that person and President Snow is no different from that where as the evil President Snow you question how in the world can anybody make those choices with no morality, no virtues, nothing, just pure violence and manipulation and aggression and this book puts you into his mind at a younger age and you understand now it's not right and you're just left thinking oh my gosh are we really is he really making this choice what is happening but you get why he got that way and I think that that's an important lesson about people in the world that we're not saying that what they do is okay or right, but if you understand why people make the choices that they make, it can help you to have compassion for them and to educate them, I guess, and to try to help them out of whatever mindset they're in. 
So anyway, it was a really interesting book and it really made me think. It wasn't purely a candy bar book. <laughs> um, so I enjoy books like that. Really all of the Hunger Games books are similar in that way where you are left thinking about the world, about the state that the world is in because it is modeled after the United States of um, America because it's Pan Am and it's based on the same states but just dystopian and in the future. So it's just a cool thing to think about and I definitely recommend it. Um, it's gonna go on my shelf with the rest of my Hunger Games books and next I am going to read Midnight Sun. I actually already started it. It's taken me forever to do this video, so sorry. But eventually I'll have a YouTube schedule, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> if people actually like and comment on my videos, then maybe I'll post more, yeah? No. We'll see. <laughs> so, um, please like, comment, subscribe, tell me what content you want to see. Um, I play violin. So if you want to see violin content, let me know. Play guitar, ukulele, sing. I read a lot of books. I watch a lot of movies. I'm in a lot of fandoms. You want to know anything about a particular fandom? Um, I guess Marvel, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, some DC stuff. Um, yeah, let's do makeup videos. Do get ready with me. I'm also a computer scientist, data analyst, so just whatever you guys want to see. All right. Um, be excellent to each other and rock on. <laughs>